Did you know that every time you walk into an Apple store, they're using hidden psychological techniques to try and make sure that you don't leave until you've got an iPhone? Let me show you. Look carefully at the angle of the laptops here. Do you notice every single one is not just set to the same angle, but also quite a peculiar one. 76 degrees is apparently what they go for. Why? Well, it's planned that way so that when you go over to check it out, and you will because they make sure that every single device is always fully charged and ready to play with, that you have to adjust the screen to a viewing angle that makes more sense. And by encouraging you to touch their product, they're essentially increasing your sense of ownership. This is a real thing. It's known as the endowment effect, the psychological phenomenon where someone is much more likely to try to keep something if they feel like they already own it than to buy the exact same product if they didn't own it. Making the product feel like yours makes you feel like you'd be losing something if you didn't walk out with it. And to enhance this perception of the product being yours only, Apple employees are also apparently instructed to never touch the product that you're testing. I even went to an Apple store to test this theory, and I've scoured the internet to see if I can catch Apple employees touching the in-store models while customers are playing with them. And honestly, nothing. <laughs> Obviously, this doesn't mean they're never going to touch the products, but they've clearly been at least advised to gesture towards them or stand around them unless they absolutely have to go hands-on. But it's not just the human employees that Apple uses to psychologically condition you into buying their products, it's the layout of the store itself. Where are the cash registers? Where do you pay? This is all part of the seduction process, to put you in a state where you're not thinking about money. Apple stores aren't designed to be like shops, they're made to feel like a place to just experience Apple. But while of course money is still the end objective and they want you to buy things, doing it this way around makes you feel like you're the prize as the customer. There's no till, they literally bring iPads to you that you can pay on, so you're never waiting in a queue. And they have support specialists on site, but they don't call them technical support or the help desk. Apple instead labels their technical support service the Genius Bar, which is nothing more than a subtle rewording, but it changes how you feel about it. Removing the word help makes things feel like less of a problem. Calling it a bar instead of a desk makes it feel like more of a leisure activity than a work activity. Oh, thank you. And knowing that these people are not just knowledgeable, but geniuses, I mean, it puts you at ease. It makes the Apple Store a place you come to feel better. It's a coloured water. And then you look at the products themselves. Trust me when I say, you will actually struggle to find the price labels. There's not a single sale sign or a clearance banner, which is all Apple saying that, yeah, the price is there, yes, it's expensive, but that that is not the important thing. It's all about you, the products, and this grand tech paradise that you're inside of. This is why they almost completely do away with giving you a spec list for their products. As far as Apple's concerned, forget about it. Doesn't matter. What they want is for you to this is going to sound slightly odd, emotionally connect with the technology. And they give you the space to do that. Every phone, laptop, and iPad has an ocean of empty table between them. But it's not them being disorganized with their store layout. It's them deliberately signaling that, actually, yeah, this iPad or this watch right here is important enough to be worth taking up half the table. It's a really subtle way of increasing the buyer's perception of the value of the item. And then when you're standing there using this tech with all that space, you then feel important as a spin-off effect. And by the way, this feeling of space isn't just some conspiracy theory that you can find in the dark depths of Reddit. Apple have been really public about the kind of feeling that this delicately considered, airy, laid-back atmosphere can create. We actually don't call them stores anymore. We call them town squares. And the fact that the whole store is just this one continuous, undivided space means that even though you might come in to just see one thing, there's a good chance you won't leave until you've felt and touched a lot more. It is crazy to think how much thought goes into these four walls, and we haven't even got to the employee handbook yet. Like, look at the outside of an Apple store. Glass everywhere. And that's partially recognizability. This is what people associate Apple stores with. But also, it shows every single passerby exactly what's going on inside. It shows people playing Angry Birds on the iPads, people playing whack-a-mole on the HomePods. No, maybe that was just me. And just generally a high energy positive vibe that gives them a fear of missing out on it. I'd be willing to bet that Apple stores have one of the highest rates of people not necessarily planning a journey to there, but just happening to end up inside. Which would be a big part of why Apple has the single highest earnings per square foot of space of any retail store. Which is almost even more shocking because of how spaced out the store is. Not to mention that for some of their flagship venues, 
Apple goes so hard with its architecture and design that the stores themselves have become tourist attractions that people seek out just for the experience of being there. I mean, the one in New York City, for example, boasts a 30-foot glass tube as an entrance. They took over the massive Los Angeles Theatre, completely remodeled it, and have now called it Apple Tower Theatre. There's one in Singapore, which is this giant glass dome on the water, designed to look like a floating lantern. Oh yeah, and the one in Dubai has this massive balcony, which is considered to have one of the best views of the entire area, to the point where it's actually being dubbed as the living room of the city. Kind of like this is the bedroom of my house. It's actually my wardrobe over there. Which is why it is blowing my mind that we are this close to overtaking Apple in subscribers. And if you can help us to get there, then we will build the most powerful iPhone on the planet ourselves. So the sub to the channel would be incredible. But yeah, I mean, the point is, if your shop manages to become a cultural icon, then all that money spent on design and decor, that's going to make itself back very quickly. And then, to absolutely maximize the number of repeat customers to their Apple store, Town Squares. The company even holds these completely free Today at Apple classes on things like photography, which sounds like a very strange use of both people's time and the limited, really expensive store space that you have to use. And brand image is their absolute number one priority. And so they've just decided that fewer but more deeply invested consumers is the most secure bet. Not being in a rush to make quick sales and just letting people in their own time gently fall in love with the brand is a decision that you can tell Apple has purposefully made. And nothing makes the company's slow and steady sales approach clearer than the way that employees have been trained. When I went to the Apple Store recently to test this service, I came up with some of the most ridiculous reasons why my Apple devices weren't working, including that my iPhone was uh, closing apps every time I looked away. <laughs> But even with a problem as obviously stupid as that, they still somehow made me feel like I wasn't the one being an idiot. So how? I mean, for starters, Apple doesn't even call their employees employees. Every single Apple staff floor member, even the non-technical support people, is called a specialist. And while I do think that's a bit of a stretch, to me a specialist means someone who could really deep dive into product specifics, which some Apple staff can't. It's also at the same time not nearly as cringe as Starbucks's partners or Subway's sandwich artists, because there is an element of truth to it. Apple stores are just really, really hard to get a job at. They're known for having lower acceptance rates than Ivy League universities, like Harvard. And that's important for Apple because they expect a lot from their team. Not in the traditional sense. Apple doesn't give them any sales targets, there's no commission for selling more, but instead they play the long game by encouraging intelligent staff to build genuine feeling micro-friendships with the only objective of just making the buyer feel seen and heard. Because if they do that, then even if they don't make a sale today, Apple is happy just having made a good impression. Because they've increased the likelihood of that customer then coming back another day, and then buying an iPhone, and then becoming a deeper fan through all the other things the brand does. I've even found some posts online that say this commitment to being genuinely helpful above trying to make a quick sale means that Apple specialists are also completely open to recommending other brands. Although when I tested that myself in store, most of them weren't trained on anything except Apple's own. So they didn't really know. Now, if this insane dedication to customer service is kind of giving you hotel vibes, that's because well, that's exactly what it is. When Steve Jobs was first designing the entire concept of an Apple store, he asked around the Apple offices what people's best memories of customer service was. And one name kept cropping up the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. Ritz-Carlton has been making hotels since 1983, and they enshrine customer service to such an extent that every single employee follows the three steps of service. Which led Apple to create the five steps of service that also happened to spell out the word Apple. You had to warn up them, didn't you? Approach customers with a personalized warm welcome. Probe politely to understand all the customer's needs. Present a solution for the customer to take home today. Listen for and resolve any issues or concerns. And then to end with a fond farewell and an invitation to return. And credit where due, they kind of stuck to this by the book when I was there. I was approached no less than three times within my 30 minutes at the store by someone with a big wide smile asking if I needed a hand. And then when I explained my made up problem to one of the guys, he on the spot immediately booked an appointment at the Genius Bar, which was 10 steps from where we were standing, which did mean that I didn't leave the store until I had a satisfactory solution. But then, if you thought all of those rules on the Apple staff were a little bit excessive, then the Apple Store Employee Handbook just gets downright creepy, with a list of no joke 
banned words. So this manual was leaked in 2012 by Gizmodo. I'm sure it's changed somewhat since then, but the crux of it is that Apple really wants their team to frame bad situations in a positive way that sort of takes the blame away from the Apple products themselves. And just for fun, while I was in the store, I did actually test this. I told the guy that my MacBook was getting incredibly hot around this region here, which is Kind of true, it was happening with my old one. But then when he repeated the issue back to me, just to confirm it, he did subtly reframe it as the laptop having been warm, which I did find quite amusing. So between the endowment effect, the store layout, the space between products, the employees, there is so much happening in these Apple stores to coerce you into walking out with a shiny new iPhone. And now that you have it, the Insta360 Flow is what's gonna take it to the next level. And trust me, when I saw this, I thought, oh, it's just another stabilizing gimbal, but no. The legs fold out to become a tripod. The handle extends to become a selfie stick. The battery inside this Flow is powerful enough to double as a battery bank to charge your phone. And it's just so easy to use. You literally unfold it, and it's on and ready. Every control is right underneath your fingertips with the smart wheel, including the ability to remotely check footage and scrub through it to make sure it's all okay. Plus, when you're filming, you just tap the subject that you want to focus on and the flow just makes sure that you basically never lose sight of it. Even if what you're tracking disappears behind something, it's intelligent enough to remember what it looks like and just carry on the tracking as soon as it appears again. So hit the link in the description to get flow-ing today.